This conference will now be recorded. Um, I will call the Vice School Pedestrian Committee meeting of 48 to order. Roll call, please come. Tracy Fleeky. No. Kyle to go. Moving on down. Zale Schmitz. Mira. <laughs> Sharon Powell. Thank you. Thank you. Um, pledge to Tampa Pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, liberty and justice for all. All right, and for action on the agenda, so we'll take a motion to approve the agenda for today. Well, I did read it pretty quick because I wasn't around this weekend, but I would, I would motion to approve it. Motion by Dale, second by second. Um, Jessica, here she is. So, I'm right. second by Sharon. All those in favor say aye. 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 This is for the agenda. Um, those opposed? Some motion carried. Thank you. Um, her turn. No. <laughs> <laughs> hey, she made it. One minute to go. Yes. Captain, at least you're here. Someone does want to show up somewhere. Yeah, yeah. I was going to say, you should be talking about it. I know. Sorry. Yeah. Okay, I have no five action on the minutes. Um, let's see. What minute is that one? On March 11th, 2024. Yep. Any corrections, changes? Otherwise, motion to approve. I move we approve them. Motion by Kyle. A second. Second by Dale. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. Thank you. Um, comments from the public. Limited to items not on the agenda. You must state name and address. Limited to five minutes. Board's role is to listen and not discuss the item. Personal Personnel issues cannot be discussed nor individuals named, and board is not able to take action at this meeting. I don't see anybody out. Either place, so we will continue on. Um, reports and updates. We'll start with public safety since Brian's back there. Hi, good afternoon. Hi, Brian. Hi, Brian. Um, so I don't have final uh, first quarter 2024 numbers done yet, but as far as overall crashes, overall crashes are down compared to first quarter of 2023. Uh, first quarter of, 20 of this year had uh, 97 total reportable crashes compared to 113 for the same quarter of last year. Uh, we've only had that one um, bike pen crash. That was a pedestrian crash back in January, person crossing um, one Ida Street by a uh, quick trip there. Um, that struck by a vehicle turning out. Uh, compared to first quarter of 2023, we had four bike and ped uh, related crashes. So off to a decent start this year. Um, traffic enforcement overall in 2023 was uh, up significantly, um, also with uh, citations issued in fine amounts. Um, we, uh, well, by next meeting, I'll have better data for uh, what the wrap up of the first quarter of 2024 was. Um, hiring is progressing along very nicely. We uh, have three that are projected to start field training in May, uh, we have two that are projected to start the academy in end of June. Um, so that's going along pretty good. They're starting to get to their psychological evaluation step of the process. Um, so far looking good and I'm cautiously optimistic. Uh, we did put our training staff or did put our staff through a legal update here recently, uh, including a uh, rather in-depth discussion on our drug recognition expert program. Uh, hopeful to increase our uh, ability of our staff to detect drivers impaired by things other than alcohol. And we're going to be sending our newer officers through a kind of an advanced standardized field sobriety testing training um, going forward. So we have a few irons that are in the fire uh, with this new set of uh, probationary officers that's starting soon. Um, we're going to be able to roll out our uh, more concentrated focus on speed enforcement right from the field training program with our two radar and laser instructors. Um, our drug recognition expert, he is also one of our field training officers, so we've got that institutional knowledge to hopefully impart on our trainees um, right from the start of the field training program. So some of the things we've been talking about are hopefully going to be coming to fruition here in the next couple of months, um, and we should see some pretty good, hopefully, uh, downstream effects from that. Um, 
there's one other thing I was going to mention, but I'm, I'm kind of drawing a blank right now. <laughs> that's um, yeah, that's all I have for now. Um, just wanted to comment is I've seen a lot more officers out doing speed patrol, so that's a good thing to see. And I'm glad the officers are out there doing it, and it sounds like they are. So. Yep, and we've been trying to push that. Yep. Good positive report. Thank yeah. you. Thank you. Um, public works looks like the other Brian is not here. Joel, do you have anything on yeah. that end? I can just kind of go through his written report real quickly. If you've been over by a title town district over on the Lombardi Access Road that started yeah. uh, a couple weeks back this past week, they completed the pulverization of the paving, moving curbing, the getting to do utility work, so a lot of stormwater utility work. And then uh, another component of that project is that there are some overhead utility lines on a on the very far western portion of the project. Those were approved to be direct buried, so they're in the process of doing that as well. So there's some overhead power, a couple different telecommunication providers. Those will be buried, and then from there, you'll probably start to see some more heavy uh, excavation work. Lombardi Access Road, um, that's scheduled to be done at the end of May, and then they will move to Brookwood uh, to complete the section of Brookwood. So one will be done first, before they move on to that next phase in order to help the area businesses with access because Brookwood will have some access limitations when that project begins as well. When um, you say down just in truck quick, you mean just the roadway itself so the uh, sidewalks and stuff will not be in or will that all be done, Joe? My understanding is the Lombardi access road will be done at the end of May. Oh. Done, done, and then they're going to move on to Brookwood. Oh, yeah. If good. I'm wrong on that, then we'll let you know. Okay. That's my understanding. Oh. No, we'll let you know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Um, either way, the road will there'll be access before they move on to Brookwood. There'll be access on the Murray Access Road. That's, that's key and critical. Uh, Industrial Park Trail Project is still reviewing the scope of that and uh, the Annual for Uniform Traffic Control Devices. Um, based on their review, there wasn't a requirement to remove the bollards, but if the bollards are to remain, the current MUTCD does recommend additional pavement markings to alert bicyclists because they can be considered a Instruction to them. Uh, so we're reviewing that. We're getting an inventory done. Our engineering tech, we started back in uh, the early part of March, is going through and doing an inventory because not only would we have to add pavement markings, but we'd have to add some additional signage as well. So we want to inventory that and get an idea what those costs are and then we'll report that back. I would anticipate we'll have that ready right for, for the next meeting. Can I um, just um, meet us with our trail bollards too? Um, one of the primary reasons in the information that was that Brian put in was to keep motor vehicles off of the trail is for the hours. Um, you know, the trail's been there about 30 years. Does anybody have any idea, Brian, from public safety, have we ever had any issues that you remember where motor vehicles have been on that trail at all? I know, Rex, you talked about it once with that towing company. Correct. There, there, and there, there, there have been. We get calls all the time. I got a call or email this weekend that there was a Vehicle trying to go through Sherwood Forest. Yeah, but how about the industrial park trail? Well, I'm using that as an okay. example. Right. And I think it's a baller personally from a director's, my my personal opinion, I don't remember that, yep. is that they've done their job except for some of the businesses that have specifically tried to skirt the ballers, ballers to, to use it. So I I, I I think they've done the job that they were originally intended to do. And yet, just another thing, just to think about, I guess, if something could be checked into to see if there are issues on the trail with with motors that we've had um, issues in the past. Um, and then on Brian's report also, it says that they can be a problem for trail users, like Joel just said, they, they're an obstruction for trail users, and there's certain things that have to be done to make sure that they're visible. Um, you know, when you look at it, we have, you know, thousands of trail users every year on that trail. There's a lot out there. I use it more often because I go out to the ridge. Um, and to me, to make sure it's as safe as possible for our pedestrian and bicyclists out there is a big factor compared to keeping the cars off. So I think that's just something to keep in mind as we move forward on it. True. Um, oh, and sorry, one other thing, just if we ever go and decide to remove snow on that trail too, the bollards are going to be an impediment on that as well. So to keep that in mind again as we move. Um, as a cyclist, the bollards are an impediment, a danger, but so would a car be coming down that road. And there was just an accident on Highway 29, a head-on collision with cars going 
different directions on the same side of the highway, you know, so I guess as inconvenient as those, those bollards are, drivers do dumb stuff. I would like to do everything we can to keep keep more vehicles off that trail because people will. I think that's one of the things we want to evaluate is so the METCD has there's a pavement requirement, pavement marking yeah. requirement for those bollards. So usually it's like Okay. And then a, a line that comes off the tip of the diamond, but then there needs to be some signage that goes into that. So if we're going to maintain the bollards and bring everything to MUTCD standard, here's what the cost would be. Okay. Here's what the cost would be to remove the bollard. Here's, and obviously there's no cost if you just leave it status quo. So that's what we plan to bring back through the group is just here are the three options leave it alone, bring it to MUTCD standard. Or, or remove them all together. That was going to be my suggestion. Let's find out what those costs are because it's not just making it, it's also maintaining it. Right? For public or for. Yeah. yeah. But, and, and whatever we do, if we decide it's a problem, we can reverse it later if it's, if it needs to be. Not that we would we go in with that idea, but if we take them off and then find out public safety tells us there's a problem with vehicles on there. Everything can be changed for a dollar, right? Yeah. <laughs> so, so we'll we'll come back with more comprehensive information on that. If we touch the trail mojo and we're resurfacing, would we have to put those bollards up to standards no. if we leave them? So you can leave them exactly even if we're touching them. How, some improvement and how we scoped this project out originally, it was just to be a pavement maintenance project. It wasn't a full reconstruction. Yeah. So think of it like a mill pave. When we do mill pave on any local street, we're just milling a portion of the asphalt. Here we're milling a full portion just because it's not very thick to begin with. It's a recreational trail. Um, so think of it as a mill pave. We're just basically maintaining the asphalt pavement by adding some of these other features. Obviously, we're extending that. Um, mill pave, for example, when we do that, it's just that. We're milling a portion of the asphalt. We might do some point repairs, meaning um, curb and gutter that maybe Kitty Wampus on the street may get marked for repair. There might be some driveway aprons that have to get repaired because of some damage or grade changes. So those things happen, but generally speaking, we wouldn't necessarily change street signs or traffic control signs or anything on any mill pavement project. So that's kind of how we scoped the project originally, but if we're looking to extend it, here's Here's what the, the cost would be. I'd imagine there's some areas that are going to need a better base. If you ride it, there's some areas that are. There's, I think Rex and Brian went through the trail last year and identified specific areas where there's some drainage issues as well. Yeah, the, the issues on that the trail. Most, most of the issues actually stem from, well, number one, someone sloughing off towards the creek, so that just needs to be solidified. But the other issues on the trail regarding are some ruts. Yeah. There's some ruts that have really popped the trail mm -hmm. up a little bit, and so those probably need to be cut um you know uh, and and removed and then so that well when they did that big runoff spot there too made a big difference because there's a lot of times it was full of water you weren't going that way yeah or, well that it was designed, i haven't seen that it was designed that way originally because it's the overflow so it was you know, designed you have to find over the years trail. we've we've so. increased the size of some of the culverts that have gone underneath there's been some yeah. walls oh, yeah yep over the years i know at least two in two instances because the um the culverts were a little undersized, and you know, during some of the soup, like rain events, not like a normal rain, but rain events kind of like yeah. undercut around the culvert roll. type of thing. So we had to basically cut a hole in the trail all the way across and pull that whole culvert out and expand the size of that. And, and okay. That has solved that issue over the time. Um, going back to the report, then. Uh, we're still working on the design work for this main avenue trail and sidewalk extension. Um, again, just kind of continuing on that project. No major updates there. We are looking to put out for bid the traffic signal controller replacements, likely to be done here shortly with uh, more consideration at the end of the day. And somewhat loosely tied to that, we have the traffic signal push buttons and the countdown timer replacements. So part of our intergovernmental agreement with the city of Green Bay, those walk, don't walk signs will be replaced with the, the 16 inch um, countdown timers and then the AD accessible message signs so that it's current to, to standard. 
Um, Packer Land and Grant Street down about Nola Bates there. That project is not scheduled until next year. There'll be some design work that's going to be done to serve that particular project. And that's what we have. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> All right, Parks and Rec, Rex, anything on your end? I don't really have too much more to go with right now. We um, we have a meeting scheduled with Grafe, a walk through on the Ashwaubenon May Trail. The next phase on um, Friday, April 19th. Um, once that information is relayed, we just have to, to iron out a couple of kinks. And then we're hoping by the end of the month that we will have bid specs ready to go for the next phase. Uh, go around Ashwaubenon May Park that's behind the lake. Mm -hmm. Along the southern fence line, and then um, over to the old Fort Launch parking lot area. Yeah. So we're looking at expanding the Ashwaubenon River Trail around mm -hmm. the exterior of the park. Exterior, okay. So it would be behind Ashwaubenon Lake to the southern fence line. Okay. Um, along the southern fence line, and then kind of looping back around the park entry road into the old Fort Launch area. Be nice. Okay. And then from that point on, I mean, as long as Brown County has the money, which which apparently it is a priority for them, um, they would take that trail, push it behind New Water, um, and into the Brown County Fairgrounds yeah. for the people in the fairgrounds to use. So that they would have that. Yeah. So that trail would go all the way basically from the marina into the Brown County Fairgrounds. Nice. Wants to hear here to east of here and go a lot of places. There you go. Yep. That's That'll be nice. Anything else, Rex? Um, no, nothing. nothing. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Um, I know Mario is here from Wallow. Mario, do you have anything to add? I'm sure I actually just had two very brief uh, updates from Wallow's end. Um, so the first I wanted to share was the 2023 Wallow Community Health and Wellbeing Report um, has been published. So that went out last week. If you attended the summit, you should have received an email from Natalie um, with the link to that report. Um, if you get our newsletters, um, you'll get it in that, which just went out today. And then you can also just visit wello.org and um, it's right at the top of our homepage in the banner. If you just click on there and you would be able to read the report. Um, so we do have information in there by zip code. So if you'd like to see anything a Schwab non specific, you would be able to see that in there. If there was anything specific, um, that wasn't in there that you would like to see um, regarding Ashwabadon, please feel free to contact us. And um, I can always put you in contact with our data, data and evaluation manager, and we can see um, what the numbers look like specifically within Ashwabadon and could um, potentially look at a report for that. So um, that's a potential option to keep in mind. And then the uh, second update was, uh, I think at the last meeting I had mentioned that as part of the Yield to Your Neighbor campaign, one of the things we wanted to offer this year was um, in addition to offering the Frogger training once again to our participating law enforcement uh, partners, we also wanted to offer a community session. Um, so this would be a free session just like the officers receive around bike pedestrian safety laws leading causes of crashes. So there's um, a classroom portion to it and then a portion of actually kind of running a mock Frogger um, with uh, we bike ETC, which is uh, who we hire to do the training. So we actually now do have all the details and information set for that community session. We are going to cap it to 25 people. Um, again, it is free, and I can share this with you, Tracy, if you'd like to share this info out with the group, so you don't have to feel like you have to repeat or write down everything I'm saying. But the training is going to take place Tuesday, April 30th, at the Aging and Disability Resource Center, so ADRC in downtown Green Bay. And it's going to take place from 10 a.m. to noon. So again, that first hour is classroom instruction in the ADRC room, and we'll have um, some beverages, uh, food and beverages provided. And then that second hour is literally just walking outside of the ADRC and using that unmarked crosswalk there um, to kind of run a mock Frogger event. Um, as I mentioned, We Bike ETC is the facilitator, so Peter will be leading that training. Um, so if you are interested, um, we'd be more than happy to have you join and attend. And again, I'll share the form with Tracy. Um, so if you are interested in uh, filling that out, again, we're capping it at 25 people. And if there's any questions about that, I um, am happy to answer. Or again, regarding the uh, well-being report that Wello published as well. 
Thanks, Mario. If you yeah, if you send me the info, I'll be happy to get it. I'll get it to you, Kelly. Maybe you can get it out to everybody. And um, it'd be great if any of the committee members would like to participate in it as kind of to see what it's like and to get that education too. It's a um, a good program that they have that will sponsor. So, any other questions for Mario? Anybody? Thank you, Mario. Appreciate all right, it. Thank you all. I'm gonna hop off then. All right. Thank you. All right. Hi. Bye bye. All right. And we will go on to item 8A. It is for discussion of possible action. A is consider discuss act on installation of bike lanes on Park View Road. Mm -hmm. <laughs> is this different than the one we already discussed? Yeah, I thought that was denied. Right. Uh, we talked about it in 2000, 2023, we talked about it, and then it came back, and then everyone said, wait, we want to look at this. This is my understanding, but maybe I'm wrong. The people wanted to go out and look at it to see what they thought, and then come back and talk about it, and I don't think it ever came back after people had a chance to look at it. This is my understanding, and I may be wrong on that, but I think that's where we left it. Um, and then with Bellin going in, <clears throat> um, you know, I'm allied and just the allied and um, part of it, um, kind of a change of use a little bit up in that area too. Um, you decided to put it back on. So, but. My only question would be is if, yeah. if you even thought about this, how would you accommodate the people that are concerned about parking with their businesses that are there and have been there for right. quite some time? Yeah. Um, because it's kind of after the fact hey, for them, not for us, but it is for them. Right. So if I, I'm trying to put myself in their shoes, and I own that business, and now we're gonna, and if there's a if there's a parking lot or someplace where you think somebody could accommodate them, even if people may have had to pay to park there, but I don't see where that would be in that area. Yeah. Well, it's, it's not the greatest place in the world for a business that has that type of population coming in, right? And not having a parking lot, yeah, they can accommodate them. But yeah, no, and I know, you know, I know what you're saying. Um, just to kind of reiterate with Pack the Park View, um, when Ashland Avenue was changed, mm -hmm. they closed off the vehicular access at Park View, so you can no longer go east west across Ashland at Park View. And yeah, now right. it is designed only for bicycle and pedestrian access. So. DOT saw a need for that. There was a request for that because people come from east from De Pere, heading west to Eshwabana and to the industrial park area. And then you have it the other way, people heading from west from Eshwabana heading to east to get on Broadway, which is one of our only north-south bike lanes. Also has our new trail and our bridge that we just talked about and you know, providing access to that. And like Dale said, there's then you head south into De Pere, you get into the city and you can get to the Fox River Trail. So it is it is an access that gets used. There's people I used to commute through there and I would see quite a few bicyclists coming the other direction. So heading into Ashwabana to work in the industrial park area. So it is kind of an escape route and a place that's used for um, for bicyclists. So DOT has seen that and in fact just recently they put up some more signs out there saying that bicyclists can go straight through because before it said it didn't have that there. It said no left, no left turn, I think. Um, so they put those up. They also put reflectors on the island so it's easier to see how to get into there. So it was kind of hard to tell. Um, so they did, you know, work on that. So, um, and the other thing, you know, your comment about uh, is Mr. Williams' property. So it's the volleyball and the um, yeah. type of soccer facility and the gymnastics yeah. facility in there, in the building. Um, I talked to Mark this weekend and he is not in favor of the bike lanes mm -hmm. at all because of parking. You know, just yeah. like you said, it's yeah. already got parking yeah. with two other businesses that he has a contract with, the BDH and the this two electrical I can't remember, BDH and somebody else. Um, so they allow parking in their lot for him, for his patrons. Um, but we did talk a little bit about what you call shared use lanes, which are also called Cheryl's. And they're ones that you see a bike on the road and then they have almost a sergeant stripes on top of them. Um, that are alongside the road. So if you're going down Hanson, for instance, it has bike lanes now, and you get to Oneida Street, when you get closer to Oneida, there are Cheryl's 
because there wasn't enough space there to have a true bike lane, so they put Cheryl's. Um, also, if you ever travel on Broadway, when you get further north, there's Cheryl's there as well, once you get into the city of Green Bay and just past Lake Cods. Because um, again, there wasn't enough room for, um, for a bike lane, just so the city did it that way. Um, I talked to Mark a little bit about that, if he had an issue with it. Cheryl's, we kind of talked about, he kind of understood them, and then he went out and looked at them, and kind of was like, well, I think maybe that, I don't know, maybe that might be something that would work, but he wants to make sure he can't park in there. With, with a Cheryl, you can have parking. Um, so that was just my discussions. He was going to try to get here today, but he has a, a daughter um, from out of town that's in town, and said he was, maybe wasn't going to be able to make it. But, um, you know, and then we talked a little bit about the changes on, on the West End, and um, you know, I'm thinking that's going to be a lot more parking by Bellin with maybe employees parking there. And that was like, you know, kind of, we kind of went back and forth on that a little bit. But um, uh, so that was just his discussion. I guess he's not totally opposed to it. He thinks if there's a way to do it that, you know, people can, you know, get through there. And if it is actually more of a bicycle route or a bike mm -hmm. facility. So, um, that's just some discussions I had, you know, with him. Um, you know, my neighborhood's all on my end of town. That's the easiest way. I mean, if you go north, you have Hanson, which does have bike lanes on it. But when you get to the intersection with Ashland, if you're on a bike, it won't trigger for you. The lights won't change. There's a button there that you can push. Um, but you have to get off your bike, get over there and push the button. Um, so it's not as safe of a crossing as maybe Parkview is. And then when you get to the south, you have the roundabout and the glory. So at Parkview, it automatically. There is no. Right, there's no license. I was going to say, I didn't yeah. think so. There's nothing there. So, nothing there. So, so you're so saying that's safer than going where there's a bunch of press? Yes. Because with Parkview, you have a safe haven in the middle. Mm -hmm. So you can pass and you're just what, looking, you can say going to the east, pull up to the intersection, you're looking just to the south. You know, yeah, people turning. Or to the, the north. north. And there's nobody turning, there's no left turners or right turners. And then you go across and then you have a safe haven in the middle. Mm -hmm. And then again, you just have to look so yeah. And then you, you know, yeah. so you're not watching two directions of traffic. So yeah. it's a safer crossing, you know. And then you get the roundabout is the next crossing at Glory, because mm -hmm. that would be your next access. But um, a lot of bicyclists are afraid of roundabouts. Especially, I've gone through that roundabout with bicycle. I only did that once, and I'm not coming through here again. Yeah, and I don't mind it, but again, I, I bike more, and it doesn't matter to me. But um, some people, a lot of cyclists, don't like roundabouts. Um, so, so that's just kind of my two cents worth. Um, and, and I know, you know, the staff has some concerns about, you know, the bike lanes out there and, um, and we haven't even discussed here else. It just came up with Mark and I. Um, so that's just kind of some. Because you're more knowledgeable, obviously. About oh, yeah. Well, you are. Um, so can you explain or just Cheryl, what does that look like? I'm not. It's, um, not it, it looks, it's. It's, it's just okay. a big chevron painted in the road. I'll put it up. Okay. And it's a but there's a bike on the bottom part of it, yeah, and then on yeah. the top there's like two stripes. It almost looks like sergeant stripes. So yeah, this is on yeah, South there. Broadway. This is yeah. north of the mills. More yeah. city. There you go. But my question is, how does that work with the car park? Well, where is there? See how close yeah. it is to yeah. the right? Yeah. So there's no parking allowed on this section. And that's why it's positioned where it is. So if you go further north, Joel, you'll you'll see some where there is parking allowed, and they will pull it out. So then the Sharrow will be on the outside edge; it will not be in the parking lane. lane. Um, so it'll basically what Sharrow shared use lane marking is to show the bicyclist where to go. It's a direction. And how to travel. It's a direction, and that's why they have the two arrows okay. on the top saying. This is the direction you go. It's really hard to see on the screen, I'm sure. But it's here's pretty the faint. Shero, yeah. Uh, so parking right here, yeah. so you can see it's outside of the parking lane. Yeah. The only thing with that though is what happens? <laughs> he has that volume of people there. Uh, I, I'm not going to disagree yeah. with your thoughts at all. Right. All right. Because if, if that was me, I think I would have built that someplace else where I had parking excess, but he did. It right. is where it is. Yeah. But. So now there's cars parking there, and I go to a lot of stuff for my grandkids. Yep. So I know exactly what he's dealing with because right. you don't park in parking lots in most cases if it's, it's a full tournament, right? Mm -hmm. So now I'm thinking the guy's opening up the car door. 
I, I'm not sure it's what's no more dangerous. It's no different than bike lanes that are situated in the same way. If you have a parking space next to it on the right, yeah. the bike lanes are right next to it. So yeah, you're right. It is. It is What's an ideal. Pardon? What's the truck traffic over there? You know, there's quite a fair amount. I wouldn't want. I, I'm not an experienced biker, but I wouldn't want to be there with the trucks. There's 2,500 traffic counts. Is about 2,500 in that area. Um, mm -hmm. right. And then 900 to the eastern edge. So right now in the in the bike head plan. Parkview Road is listed as is listed to just have a wide outside lane or a wide shoulder, which is what it what it presently has. There's no delineation, those, there's no demarcation. It's basically just a wide road. It allows for multiple uses for parking to cyclists, if you will, I suppose pedestrians, although I don't know that I would recommend that. Um, but there's but, nowhere else to walk. So but there's nowhere else to walk, yeah. right? So you're you're kind of limited to do that. Yeah. Um, so you can see here this orange dash line indicates a wide outside lane. There are other um, other locations throughout the village in the bike and pet plan that identify a bicycle route. And those are marked on the map as red. So you can see up here more in the northwest corner of the village, there's a variety of different areas. And in fact, what I'm going to be talking about as part of the next agenda item about creating this bicycle route. Now, it doesn't say anything in the bike and pen plan about creating kind of share rows or share use lanes. But I'm guessing existence. they weren't really they weren't really prevalent or in, no. in high mm -hmm. use, especially yeah. in this area when this plan was originally put together. Yeah. But the concept is basically the same, is it's a bicycle route delineated with either a paved chevron or some kind of signage indicating that bicyclists will or could be present, right? So um, there's a variety of things that you can look at it from marking a bicycle route. It obviously helps encourage bicycling in that on that road or that stretch. It's designed to help alert motorists that bicyclists may be more prevalent in that area versus other areas. So it helps from uh, an education standpoint as well. So that's really the idea here. It doesn't necessarily create any more space, doesn't create any more uh, delineated area, not like a dedicated bicycle lane where it's specific for that use, but it does alert and certainly encourage. So it provides education and encouragement for bicyclists. Um, so at present, the wide outside lane was was originally in the plan. So what the committee would be looking to to recommend would be that we're going to change the plan and identify Parkview to have some other feature. My recommendation at this point to be consistent with the current lane, which is to be marked as a bicycle lane, right? So that could be elevated street signage, the green sign that you see bike route, the bicycle symbol and or the bicycle, the paved bicyclist slash chevron on the street, just indicating that is it is a dedicated bike Is connection between the pier and, and, and Parkview? Is that road? No, because it would run counter to that. So okay. it's, it's an east-west route. So it would connect from Commodity Lane in the, in the industrial park. Okay. Is it possible to bring, bring it up? <laughs> Can you up? Bring it up, sure. Well, this I mean, is, just, no. Yeah, just so she. Because I run into that sometimes when you're talking about areas on the yeah. 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 But on the screen Our here, side. it ties so. up to the pier kind of by the front of the town. I know, I know where it is, but okay. do we need it to get from here to there? My so this is well, the, the real connection is to Parkview. East West oh, connection. Okay. So if you look at the screen, what did I miss? Uh, number 10 is Parkview Road. Okay. <clears throat> so if you get on the far. From the town. Okay. Yeah. So yeah. this is. True north, east, west, south, right? So north is up, west here, east. This is Interstate 41, right here. This is Ashland Avenue here, yep. to give you reference. Wabi and Oneida is this stretch that kind of loops down through here. So here's Wabi, Oneida, and then Parkview is just south of that. So I think one of the attractiveness uh, points here is it's a longer stretch 
uh, that does have an underpass underneath Interstate 41. So it does create mm -hmm. that connection. And then as Tracy had mentioned, I can pull it up on the screen to show you what improvements were done at Ashland mm -hmm. to get you across there. Oh, to, get to, the trail. to get to yes. the trail. To get to because the trail. Because so that, that's okay. the attractiveness of this connection okay. that would then get you to that north south to the right. Green Bay okay. connection. Gotcha. Yeah, it gets you to the bike lanes on Broadway or the trail. It's a drift in. It's a drift in. I know where it is. Yeah. 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 So you want to extend. So uh, they're 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 okay. talking you know, they're talking this whole route this the green lines up okay. all the way around. Okay. So they're talking. The whole route. Trace, is there a sidewalk at all? No. Mm -hmm. So all these people that go to these events, they're walking on the road. They're walking on the road. Yeah. So this is the if you look at the screen, this is yeah. the street view of Parkview. <clears throat> oh, thanks, this Joel. Joel. That's a, this business on the left is the one where Mark Williams yeah. owns. And so they, they do get quite a bit of parking activity, obviously overflowing from the parking lot on the street. Yeah. And as you go west, so this is looking west, as you go west, it becomes certainly more industrial, larger industrial, if you will. So yeah. there is a decent amount of truck traffic on the park field. This is the 41 viaduct here, this bridge in the far, far background. So you must be at Holmgren about, we think. Just about, yeah. Okay. So Holmgren would be this intersection right here. Okay. Yeah. And if you go up that way, there's a lot of track people park on the street up that way. There are some single family homes that are unrelated that to the right. Yeah. Yes, and they park on Holmgren also. Yep. yep. If you want to experience well. it, yeah. just figure out what day they're having an event. It won't take long to figure out what yeah. it's like. No. It's, it's just Every cars so all over the place. This image, that. Sharon, is this is Carpew right here. It's in the right middle. place. Yep. The drift in is the red building. Drift, yeah. yeah. And this is the improvement that Tracy was talking about. There's a trail that connects okay. over to Ashland. Yep. And then they okay. have this, um, what do you call it, a chicane type? Yeah. Uh, I don't think it's called that. Yeah, because you really it's turn like right coming out of yeah. 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 that way. Yeah. So yeah. this is so just, yeah. just yeah. a yeah. 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 This is just yeah. bicyclist, and it forces you to come across. And then if you're going to mm -hmm. cross to the east, you have to go south. You have to face south to see your oncoming For traffic. This traffic, because that goes yeah. right only. Yeah. 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 So that was designed specifically for that purpose. And the same thing if you're... Coming from the east, heading west, you then have to turn actually, to face look, north. You actually enter further yeah. south. There's another That's entrance. Right here. Yeah, down. I, I'm not sorry, not south. There's further north. There's another entrance that where you're coming eastbound, westbound, you would enter a different entrance. Um, it's like right in there somewhere, Joel. It's hard to see. Yeah. Um. Yeah. Right there somewhere, and then you come back this way, the same entrance that you come in. So it's designed so you have to stop and look for cars. You'd rather just People. There's nobody coming from my left. I'll just keep going, and yeah. the car coming from right on the other side of the boulevard. Yeah. The boulevard gets you. Yeah. But if you compare that to Hanson, mm -hmm. think about the frontage roads, yeah. the left turns, the right yeah. turns. Yep. The, yeah. It's you really four lanes, you, and you really right. have to watch. Even though you have the lights, which yeah. is a big deal, but, but you got to be so conscious you yourself do. as a yeah. as you're going to lose. Oh, oh yeah. <laughs> if someone runs away, you're, you're going to lose. Yeah. So, so, yeah, as Tracy had mentioned, at present, the, the current design of Parkview would not be wide enough to allow for a dedicated bicycle lane and on-street parking. So it would be one or the other. And if you did the on-street bicycle lane, then under under the, the rules of the road, that would have to be marked as an parking condition. Yeah. And then how far away do those people have to park for those events? Well, if you did if you did on street bicycle lanes, this full section from Commodity yeah. to Park to Ashland would be all no parking. So there would be zero parking on Park View for that. Would be the best house down further. So That's in the middle of the winter, they'd have to walk through all that. Well, he uses like Trace is saying, yeah. he uses some of the businesses there. Okay. He uses yeah. their parking, parking lots because they're closed yeah. at the yeah. times he'd have in the events. Yeah. Well, and it's mainly weekends, I think. Right. Sounded that yep. they really That's what we do on the with the traffic. So. And then what do the individual homeowners think of cars parking in front of their houses? Well, it's mainly where that where that is, it's mainly right. all businesses. But when yeah. you go down further on Parkview, that's where there's residential. Yeah. I would, that's where, again, I think there's other people that park out there and I hold their hand. Yeah. Parkview there, separate from. Yeah, uh, they post their opinion about how cars being. Yeah. 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 Well, and you got that big empty field almost right across the street on the southeast corner of Homeland and Parkview. That's that's empty right now, and then there's that one house. Yeah. So I think it might park near it there, yeah. maybe someplace. And I don't know if that's, do they, does that house own that big 
No, no, or is that separate? No, Mark was telling me someone else owns it. Because that could be both. Okay. Blame Mark Sunday. So just things, I guess, to think about. Um, I guess the hard thing for me, and again, I'm all for obviously like if that stuff I wouldn't be on this committee. <laughs> but like <laughs> practically, I'm like right now, it's not like you people can't bike or utilize that while there's part like for me, I'm just like right now. If it was, it's not like we're choosing one or the other, like both are able to do it. So to me, like, that's where I'm like trying to just like, what accommodates everybody right yeah. now that, and you know, as far as like the signage on there or signage on the street, I know Brian mentioned that last week or last month when you guys talked about, you know, doing more signage in general for bike routes and becoming more bike friendly and things like that. I think if that ends up working, if that's something they're already looking at doing, I'd imagine that would be of this but yeah for me like i said as long as practicality wise people can still do both yeah. on there it's not hurting anything yeah i you know, i like the idea of trying to put sharrows or other marking or just something just to make people alert that drivers are going to be there i see this as really an uphill battle to get to prohibit parking on that street and i'm thinking maybe we choose not to fight this battle we should put our energy someplace else. Certainly do we do what we can, but how long is that business from? Oh, it's been a while. They the uh, facility might have gotten in it, so it's been quite But I can see a situation because I do a lot of them in Milwaukee with kids. Yeah. They have huge parking lots and yeah. you still gotta go find go park on the street. So yeah. Well, a lot of them are in industrial areas, I think, because no one expected them to blow up the way they did. You know, they wanted these big old buildings because yeah. you can fit all the volleyball and gymnastics and everything in it. So when they were sitting empty, it made sense to move it into it. I just don't think anyone thought yeah. private sports academies would become what they are today. Exactly. <laughs> you know, I think you wrote right in this letter 2010, if that helps you. Oh, that he built so the... Yeah, the 2010? Yeah, yeah. I don't mm -hmm. know the... This is 14, 14 years. years yeah. Don't have the history behind it, but one alternative that maybe the community wants to look at, and I could be completely shooting myself in the foot for saying this because there's maybe some obscure political reason why it wasn't included. But Glory Road is another east west connection to just south of Parkview. So that's yep. following this cursor, and it does cross the viaduct and it does ultimately connect to the roundabout at Ashland. Mm -hmm. Which I'm not saying is a safer crossing um, than maybe what you have at Parkview, but it, but it is a controlled intersection then at, at Ashland. Um, that is not identified for any improvement, whether it be an outside lane or a designated bicycle well or a bicycle lane. There are fewer homes on that stretch. There is a small snippet of homes on the very far eastern edge, but that, that section of Boyd Road is not even urbanized at present. So it doesn't even have curb and gutter right now. Um, there could be an opportunity to, to look at that as your connection point. Then what you'd be doing is connecting from Packerland all the way to Ashland. Right now, Parkview only connects to Commodity, whereas if you did Glory, you'd be picking up Packerland, you'd be picking up Commodity, you'd be picking them all up. What would it take to get from Glory back to, to um, Parkview? Parkview? What are we talking distance? Mm -hmm. um, I'm saying a frontage pathway. Yeah, so well, I'm, I'm talking future. I'm not talking spending money this year. Yeah, right. I'm, well, yeah, I think when you start looking at this map, so I don't, it's really hard to see that. I apologize. But basically, this cursor represents. Maybe I can. I, let me see. So let's see. Oh, you can't Google on like while you're on the thing. Well, I'm going to mark it green, so I'm okay. probably not going to be left. All right. We want, this is Glory Road, right? Sorry, my finger's not steady. That's Glory Road. Um, this is Ridge right here. So if you really wanted to, again, I don't know the history behind this. So you guys tell me where I'm really stepping on people's toes. I was at a meeting when they <laughs> talked about closing, redoing that Parkview and Ashland intersection. And I remember being with the city de Pier and the DOT, and I recall that they felt the Parkview was the the logical choice to get people across the road, across Ashland. I 
I don't know why, I don't remember specifics, but I remember I remember Gloria Road being discussed. Yeah. I know Gloria Road has a lot of big truck traffic as well because of it like is. was it uh, the big mill uh well, packaging and Jean, Green Bay packaging trains trains Schneider, off, training, right. like like there's a lot yeah. of semis and stuff that like that go up and down and come into the roundabout there. So I don't know if that plays into But you it. don't have near the driveways that you have on no. you know, Parkview on no, Glory. I mean, the thing with Glory I mean, it's around about, which I don't have much that some people do, but once you come into Ashwaubenon, um, the speed coming out of the pier is 25, you go through the roundabout is 25, and then that little section that's in the pier yet on the west side of the roundabout is 25. Then you get into where those homes are, mm -hmm. and it goes to 30 or 35. And the road's really narrow, like Joel said, it's, it's not an urban design, it's rural. And there's no shoulder. And it's for like, what, two blocks that it's tight in there. If you're a bicyclist and there's people driving, there's no space for everybody. So I think if nothing else, Glory Road should have paved shoulders, should have that, you know, expanded. Because then once you get past those residents, there's a huge shoulder on that bridge and there's a huge shoulder all the way up, all the way to Rich. So it's just that piece that's really bad, Joel, where the residents are, that there's just no place for a bike and car. And you have to share it, which is fine, but, um, but it's tight. It's tight there. I need to drive so, that again. I'm pretty sure. Yeah. The stretch right now. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I know. There's... I was thinking more like, if, and I don't know this about driving it, but like if you took Glory Road and went back Market Street back to yeah. Parkview. And then caught over at Parkview to cross. Yeah. yeah. Something like yeah. that. Mm -hmm. yeah. You can't go into that roundabout. Yeah. <laughs> going into West, there's no way. That there's I wouldn't nice, be going in that nice. roundabout. I don't like going in a roundabout with my vehicle. Well, I guess there's nice bike lanes once you get on the pier, and they fix that street, Ninth Street. Oh, well, Ninth really Street, sure. Nice, nice facility there. Yeah. Stuff, but yeah. yeah. Looking at so again, looking at this map here. So this green highlight is Lawyer Road has no plan for future improvements. That could be a nice east-west connection. Yeah. For some reason, there aren't planned improvements on Ridge between yeah. Wadi and Glory. There could be an opportunity there to create a solid north-south connection. Holmgren has plans for an eventual bicycle lane, so that's what that blue line indicates on here. So if you really wanted to, you could create connections back up to as well. So you can keep Parkview the way it is with wide shoulders or recommend a change to a bicycle route, and then that would avoid the parking issues, but then look for maybe other opportunities for an east-west connector for a more like robust bicycle facility, and that could be Glory Road. But again, I don't know the history behind how this plan came to be and why that was excluded, but to me, Glory Road seems like an equal opportunity. It didn't uh, go anywhere before. Is that what it was? It didn't go anywhere, okay. no. And then when they put the round uh, it in, it was a crossing, I think, to cross the 41 off ramps. Okay. And they they didn't want people crossing, and there was a residence at the end. So that's why Pride Glory wasn't involved at that time, because it just would not have been. just went right on. Yes. Yeah. 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 Is, so is, there, is there a way to get from Fort Howard Avenue to that roundabout? Yes. It's a yeah. little bit further down in the pier yeah. there is. Yeah. yeah, you take, I can't think of the road, press that paper company. You take that and go on. Well, it's, yeah. it's, it's I'm looking at a map of A Street. A Street, yeah. But at that, but you, so if you're on there, you'd have to go. Fort Howard Avenue, you have to end up on 8th Street and then, then take that to the roundabout. Yeah. Yeah. And then you could pedal over to Broadway if you wanted to and then jump in and go across. But yeah. um, I think the thing, and Joel, I think you think you hit on the head. You know, we've got our plan, which was done in 2008. Is that that long? Updated no. in 2008. The plan is from like way before my time, you so, guys. Yeah, so the plan's old. And there's things in here, like Joel was saying, that maybe don't make sense anymore and they should be looked at and glory's one the glory's not even mentioned in here you know what else is not even mentioned in here is lombardi access road nothing about lombardi access road and that got done so it's like things change and we need to be aware of that and maybe glory road has changed because it's different now it has a roundabout it doesn't go right into the freeway on on an on ramp uh, and on ramp so you know i think when we look at this we have to keep that in mind all the time that things have changed in our community that may make this no sense anymore, or maybe it does make sense, or it should be slightly different, or whatever. When we originally started the spreadsheet, 
We have a spreadsheet. Right. We call that a living document. Right. But it's not very alive. <laughs> right. Well, you've made a lot of changes well, on that. There's, the but plan. yes, we did. So yes. they can be eliminated, not eliminated, but yeah. we can say they're completed. Right. Or there's things on there we may not want to do anymore. Mm -hmm. So I think it's worth doing the review to clean it up, right. get it consolidated, get the, the trash off of it, or yeah. the things we decided not to have. Well, in 2025, we'll be redoing the bike path plan, which is huge. <coughs> it needs an update. And then we'll be looking more at some of this stuff that maybe makes more sense to look at Glory more closely now and say, maybe Glory is the way to go, or maybe Parkview. Like Joseph, maybe it's just a bike route. And that's what it is, you know. So, but I don't know. Anything else on Parkview World? Do we want to just leave it? Do we want to make any? Our, our recommendation now was that I believe, I mean, again, I think I may be, maybe I was confused that we were going to wait and look at it again at the committee. And everyone no, wanted to take there, a look at it. It was requested to be brought back, and then that was in January. And then the discussion was to go out and take a look at things. Okay. And then, due to the nature of some of the other meetings, this, it was just pushed Push to, back. To okay, bring so, okay. Back. I just said I'm like, I, I might have been I, I, I would like she like to look at other avenues of a possibility of another route to get to either Parkview or another way. And the only reason I said two sides. One, if I was the owner, and I had that business that long, mm -hmm. and all of a sudden you're going to eliminate my parking. And the other is being a person that goes to those events, <laughs> and I know exactly how it is for those people. Yeah. And you're trying to get the closest place, and yet a lot of times we end up parking a long ways away because yeah. there's a lot of people. When they do a tournament, there's a lot of people that are there. Well, and you understand, and everybody understands, the only way that parking has to go away on that road is if there's bike lines. Okay. So if there's um, shared use, Cheryl's on there, if there, it's a bike route, parking remains. It doesn't get thrown out. I'm not the against only, the Cheryl just, thing, if that, just if that helps. That, yeah. Is that's he a, the only business owner that's against this? He's or, the only one that we've heard from, but I don't know. There, there may be others. Was asked, as we know, that there's a lot of what is the, public that use it. There's a lot. Okay. The others weren't notified. I can get, I'm going to all the businesses down there, but I think season. he's the one that's most dependent on, it, on right. parking. Okay. I very rarely ever see parking on that road, except by. No, so so is that the parking lot? I'll buy that across their place. Some people park on the road. I think that's a truck traffic. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So what do I do? I say do a different alternative because I would not want to be with a bunch of trucks either. Unless it's a designated, yeah, I, yeah, I, I that's think the reality of it. Yeah, if you want to bike anywhere, yep. you're gonna ride right. with cars and trucks, and that's the reality of it. Right. But you choose yeah. not to, and that's fine. But yeah. there's a lot of people that either don't have a choice, or work somewhere and they have to get there. True. So you know, it just everyone's different and how comfortable they are in different situations. You know. And so we have two pretty opposing needs. And I think we have to try to find a way to juggle both sides and accommodate both. Yes. Because I, I just, you know, the <clears throat> we've asked for that once before and it's been turned down. Yeah. And after hearing the village board's opinions on Holmgren Way, I don't really want to fight this battle yet, especially if we talk about maybe coming back to Holmgren Way in the future. Yeah. Well, and this this item never made it to me. No, this was actually denied at this committee. Oh, okay. Right. So it never. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah, we never went to those ones. Okay. All so right. You so. Get mad at yourself. Or... Well, <laughs> no, I get mad at everybody else. I don't know. <laughs> All right. So do you want to just put Park B on hold again or just leave it the way it is? When's the last time that road was done? It was just those, repaid. I was going to say, those, there was a, yeah, which was right, there was a year, substantial portion last year that was repaid. Yeah. 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 I did, I so yeah say, when you drive on it, it looks like it's. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So so much for that. Yeah. I'm like, maybe we table it for a redesign, but that could be. I'll be dead. <laughs> I'll say this. Uh, <laughs> All right. So, you want to, anyone have a motion to. But I hold, leave it the way it is, wait till the bike pad plan is updated, um, consider it then. 
my motion would be to review other areas that we may be able to connect to that cross that was designed. And if that happened way back then and he was already there in 2010 or whatever it was, right? Obviously, somebody didn't take the time to talk to the people that had businesses on that street, creating that as the bicycle way to get to the other side. And and that's okay. I'm not I'm not throwing stones. I'm just saying, so now I don't want to penalize him because somebody didn't have the foresight to know that he had people parking on there for events. So, and yet I'm with you. We want to make it safe. That's right. what we're here for, right? Right. So I would say if, if there's a possibility of another avenue of getting from, if it's Clary Road or another road, um, I don't want to just give it up. I want to find maybe another okay. route. Well, and maybe it's something we'll say, okay, when the bike head plan is redone in 2025, this is on our list yeah. to consider. Um, and put that for this, some of our goals or what we think is important to check. And then, you know, if Brown County does it or if someone else is doing it, that's passed on to them for them to look into and the committee to look into further. Maybe um, you can put up a great big overhead sign. Like you do on the highways? Yeah. Event going on, please take this road. Yeah, there you go. Kind of like up on um, Ridge Road where you got the crossover and they yeah. still try to run you over? No, I'm just kidding. That's being facetious. Yeah. I think even like realistically to your point that you feel comfortable biking in there, right. I would not feel comfortable because I'm not an avid cyclist. But if there are people, realistically, I think the people that are going to be using that road to bike are probably going to be people that are looking for bigger connectivity, are more yeah, comfortable cyclists, then you know maybe the signs are going to be enough that right, you can still use that route if they're comfortable doing that. I think the hard thing is right now, I, I get the connectivity piece of it, but I think the majority of people with it are probably going to be people that maybe signs are enough. I don't know, because like, right. it's not your average, I don't want to say average yeah, person utilizing it, but it's the people that are comfortable biking that maybe the signs are enough. And I guess my I feeling is not one or if, the other. if you're a confident enough cyclist to go across Ashland Avenue, you can drive on there without without bike lanes. That's kind of my thought. But if you need bike lanes on there, you're you're not going to go across Ashland Avenue. You're going to say, I'm not going across that. I'd be curious how many people even know that's the bike road. Right. So that's where I'm like, it is on. Um, well, I'm not. Different, it's on different. They put it on like Strava and it's on Google Bikes yeah. and stuff. So it does show that crossing yeah. now. Like, no, I'm saying a true, in, a true bicyclist like, is going to know that. Right. But that's yeah. Yeah, the, the average, average the average bicyclist, he wants to get the east of here. Yeah. Right? Yeah. He's not your, it's not like you are. Do they know that right through? Yeah. Or do they just find a spot to get across? Yeah. Yeah. Or they don't go. Or they don't go. Or they put their bike in their car and they go. I'm um, that person to be honest. Most times we go, like I'm putting in the car and we take kids on the trails. We go because, well, I'm trying to watch kids is like herding cats, so I feel too good because <laughs> we just don't do it enough to feel like proficient in it. To right. be honest, or like yeah, a stay at home that is not as enjoyable. So it's like right. that's how we go to enjoy it. Yeah, I think there's different levels that I know those things out. You know. So we're beating this to death. Okay. No. I motion that we try to find another avenue. To get to the bike road. Okay. So. Dale's yeah, motion is to find a different avenue to get to the bike crossing on Ashland. Is that what you're saying? Yep. Okay. Second by Sharon. Yep. Which Any is other part questions deal, or correct. comments? Yep. Okay. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. Thank you. All right. Thank you for bringing that up. Um, Eight B is. Consider, discuss, act on recommendations from South High School combinations on North Road, from Palmier Road to South Point Road. And this came up when we were talking about South Point and bike lanes um, we'll put on, will be put on um, South Point next year. Um, and Kyle wanted yeah, to. Yeah, I guess I was the one who brought this up. So I just think that because we have the, the city and now village having bike lanes there, to be able to connect North Road. To do the the Pecklin Trail would just be a nice connection. You know, I live on Cormier Road, so I ride down there. And if you're 
on the trail, if you're going north, you get to the end of the trail on View Lane or whatever that street is, and there's that little park there with a little free library, but there really isn't an easy way unless you're riding down the sidewalk to get to Corbury Road. But if you would take North Road, you know, that takes you to the South Point, and then you can go west and whatever. So that, to me, seems like a, a better connection. So my initial feeling was that we should just have a bike lane there, or a bike route, excuse me, a bike route, just to connect the Packer Line Trail and the, the new connection on South Point. It does in our bike plan, um, North Road on street accommodations is what is recommended in our bike plan. And, and then we can even extend it on the other side of Packer Line and go all the way along and end up entering Corby Road next to the interstate. Yeah. yeah so Tracy's so way, the way the map lays out, we have yeah, just an on-street and an off-street facility on North Road. Yeah. So from Cormier, and then it moves south along 41, the 772 corridor. Um, you have an on-street facility, so those designated bicycle routes again, whatever that means. And then in addition to that, the bike path plan talks about putting in like a shared use path, like a side path, if you will, on the north side of North Road. And that would terminate at Babcock, which I'm assuming is because that's the crossing point at 172. There had been some talk about doing some kind of overpass or underpass at 172 by Pioneer. Um, that's Pioneer. Pioneer Park. Yeah. Um, that, that's a long story that we don't yeah. want to get into. <laughs> exactly. yeah. But in any event. <laughs> It, it, the, the route kind of terminates at Babcock, assuming that most travelers are just heading on Babcock to get south of 172. So mm -hmm. what, what we're looking at is the potential of adding some kind of on-street or on-street accommodation along North Road from Babcock past Packerland all the way to South Point. Because this is the section that was added recently by, by the committee and board. So I, I guess our recommendation is if, if the committee would like to see that, then that would be the recommendation is to amend the plan to show on the map that recommended facility be placed on North Road. Now, <clears throat> with that being said, the section of North Road from St. John's, I believe, I think that's the terminating point, all the way to South Point, that's all rural section of roadway, and it's pretty narrow, I think it's maybe 210 or 11 foot wide. Yeah, it's not so, wide enough for a bike lane. Right. No. So if that were the case, then when we go to plan for the reconstructed that road, maybe we look to widen the shoulder and have a paved yeah. shoulder. And, and that was sort of was the backdoor, my backdoor thing. If we make this a bike route now, it's in the plan, it's on the paper, people are used to that. Then when they come to expand the road, they can say, well, that's been a bike route for a long time. Yeah, we can. So it, it would be easier to, to justify. Plus, I, I know I think you told me once some of those properties, those empty properties, are owned by the airport. Yeah, I think there's a few of them, and there's some of them. Be, be, because if if they're owned by the airport, because the airport is building stuff, and if they're not owned by the airport, they're going to you know, land in a trauma and it's pretty scarce. So they're going to somebody is going to want to build something there, and if we sort of stake our claim to access or to rights to use that road now, it'll, it'll be a little easier later on than, than trying to run into the problem we're running into with Mark Williams, because all of a sudden, what do you mean you're going to use bikes down here? We can say, we've always used bikes down there. I think they were actually looking at that property for a library. Okay, I heard it that. <laughs> You know, in here, Joel, just to clarify, so it says multi-use path along the north side of North Road from Cormier Road. Should that be from South Point to Babcock? Because Cormier and North Road both run east-west. And then the designated bike road along North Road from Cormier Road to Babcock. Again, they both right run east-west. They don't intersect. So should that be South Point for both the Cormier Roads on that? I was going off the map, so if you're reading my narrative in the, in the green sheet, if yeah. you will, 
I was going out the map. So here's this is the starting ball. Scroll back to the Yep. And then it loops around. And then it, it terminates right here at Babcock because the north continues here. Right. To South Point. So that's that's not where I derive my narrative from. I don't know the name of the streets, but I think North Road intersects both Babcock and Cormier because yes. it makes that big loop. It makes that big turn. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah, if you go, if you so truck the collider, the front to the highway. Yeah, this, this is right. This is where North Road starts at Cormier. Wait, wait, right next to Cormier. Yeah. Oh, right across from Dutchman's Park. Sorry, it's really hard to see with my mouse. This is North Road actually right here. And then it loops all the way around. Yes. Goes on. Okay. And then it connects to Babcock so inside the highway. Okay. God, I'm like, where is it? Babcock. Yeah. And, and I could Where's be wrong, but I. Oh, so it intersects oh, after coming We discussed it. Oh, so right. That's where you were. Yes. Something. Yes. I get where you're on the road. Yeah. Like, yeah. And it was determined or like that. Sorry. Determined there wasn't enough room. It's like they're done in both east and west. Yeah. North changes. Yeah. The future plan is to have it there and put it there because Doug would always say this and Brian will say the same thing. When a project comes up, right. he's looking at the plan and saying, "Is this uh, are the sidewalks planned? Is there a bicycle facility?" Yep. And then we'll design the project to accommodate what was originally proposed. So I think it's important to be identified. I think it makes sense to extend it because again, I think it just said before when they put that on there today, there was no reason to go past that now there is so some like stuff that we heard. And that's a that's a pretty good road, pretty easy road to ride on your bike. There's not a lot of traffic. Absolutely. You don't have people making yeah. making left turns, right turns in front of you because it's gonna want to open school buses. Yeah. 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 School buses don't ride down there, do they? Is another interesting road that has yeah. sidewalks proposed on both sides of the yeah. road, but there's no bicycle mm -hmm. accommodation on that one. So that's just it's just interesting. I'm not sure what the politics were when these plans were adopted, but yeah. Yeah. I'm assuming that there was a, some naysayers about Cormier, and that's why it was included. That that's another logical yes. full east-west connection through the entire village connecting yeah. two well, There's no bicycle lane plan for Cormier because a large number of residents that right. have yeah. very short driveways and utilize parking on Cormier. There you go. So there that would never now would make sense to have Cheryl's there. Right. Yeah. Those yeah. Because that was not even a technical term. That right. That wasn't start. even there. Yeah. yeah. But that's why there was no bike lanes yeah. proposed at the time. Mm -hmm. Too many homes on that street that have very minimal driveway right. spaces. So yeah, they just utilize the road. Quite a bit. Sense. Duplexes too with the short study driveways as well. So that yeah. makes sense. And that, that, that's yeah. a logical reason. Yeah. That makes sense. So then really what's in the plan is the path, multi-use path on the north side and then designating a bike road along North Road. Yeah. From Cormier to Babcock. Okay. Do you real reasonably feel that we could ever get a multi-use path on the north side of North Road? No, we could we say <laughs> we've discussed that. Like there's not enough there room. wasn't enough room for it. Yeah. There's not enough room for it. Yeah. So you could probably change it to just being a kind of accommodation. Yeah. I think originally though that's that's where it was tied to the when they were going to put the cross part, correct me if I'm wrong, sure the, the, but they were going to bring the Maltese path from Cormier up to where that was going to cross because that was going to cross right by those businesses and stuff. So they could have had right away when they were redoing and they that was when they were putting the brick, fake brick wall yeah, yeah, up yeah. and all that. Yeah, they were going to put a path along that and then that was supposed to lead them across the highway. Yes. So then when that got mixed, yes. to go past that, you can't continue because that's where the businesses get back up. Yeah. And the houses. Yeah. So there is room for that. Yeah. But not yeah, not when you said they're heading to the west end of it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. All right. So I guess our, our recommendation from staff would be just to amend the plan to pick up that section of North Road from South Point to to Babcock because then that'll connect your and has that as a bike route, or yeah, that makes the most sense as narrow as that road is. Mm -hmm. To do anything else would make any sense. Mm -hmm. Okay, so then, um, if there's something you feel, then just a motion to designate North Road from Hackerland to South Point as a bike route as well, correct? Or back from from oh, from Cormier to South Point, yeah, right. all the way to South Point, all the way. Okay. Yeah. And we got it all covered. Yeah. Okay. Anybody have a motion in that regard? 
a move that we <laughs> amend the plan to include a bike route on North Road, North Road from Corvier to South Point Road. Perfect. I'll second it. For my bail, um, any other discussion? That's all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. Thank you, everybody. All right. Um, next agenda item is items for excuse me items for next agenda. Anybody have anything they would like to see on the agenda? I was wondering, Joel, you had mentioned I think it was at our last meeting uh, that V and L's, the Joinier lanes, those are the ones you see along the road, like Cormier, is a prime example of V and L. That the village is not painting those or trying to get rid of some of those. And maybe I misunderstood you, but I was wondering if you could do maybe report out on that and let us know what ones the village has said they're getting rid of, what are going to stay, what are going to remain, and maybe just a 101 on the visual and narrow lanes. Sure. I what think they what, are. Yeah, I think what I was doing is reading from the bike and pen plan. It's okay. a recommendation, but okay. we can certainly report back as to what actually took place okay. from the adoption of the plan to today. Okay, that'd be great. Because when you said yeah. that, I was like, something. Yeah. yeah. I think at one time, the village did a lot of them and then decided we were going to stop doing it. As I remember out of reading it, I think maybe Randy Johnson was still on the committee. It was right when I was playing. He was gone for a meeting and we decided we were going to ask for a BNL on some street or another. And I don't remember which one. And he came back and said, I thought we weren't doing those anymore. <laughs> All right, you know, I can. Yeah. Because I, I think that there was nothing. They really didn't mean anything. Yeah. And they were just a, a pretty lion on the road, and maybe people used it, maybe people didn't. Yeah, people were confused. They didn't know what they were because there are no standing and they're not, I mean, GCD, but there's no reason behind them. So, um, so yeah, that would be great if we could just clarify that and what the religious process or policy is on VNL. So, um, so we understand that too, especially with that plan. Um, anything else anybody have? Do you want to bring back a review of a possible um, avenue to get to Parkview? You could, or maybe you guys like, want, you want more time. Maybe you guys want more I don't want to drop it. That. I don't want to just drop it because yeah. it's important. Well, and, and maybe if you guys want to go out and look at it too. Yeah. See what you think. You know, and sometimes if you take a peek, you might see something that might be yeah, That would be my intent is to actually go wrong yeah. and just see what's. So, I mean, we can certainly nice put it back on the door, maybe yeah. can, yeah. would they be, would that be all right? Okay, so we'll put Park View back on again, our room that, our room that never goes to. <laughs> all right. There's nothing wrong with that, though. <laughs> no, there isn't, yeah, you're right, you're right. All right, if anything else, anyone has anything else, either let me know or reach out to Kelly um, to add on the agenda. Um, otherwise, our next meeting is May 13th. Um, and I would welcome a motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed. We're out of here. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Hold on.